This is the Lynx, an all-in-one headset that does uh, VR but also AR at the same time. It's being made by a small startup from France that supports an open metaverse. Amazing, right? And it can be used as a standalone HMD, so you can go wherever you want without the need of a computer, or it can be connected to a laptop or PC wirelessly to push it to the limit. Next to that, it features uh, very unique lenses, full RGB pass-through, the latest hand-tracking technology and a bunch of other cool things that I will soon demonstrate. Their goal is to sell the links to consumers and businesses starting in April 2022. The standard edition of this headset will be sold for $599 and the enterprise version will go for $1100 in US dollars. So yeah, it's the first time I got hands on with a device that gives you the so-called mixed reality package deal of what will be the future standard. This video will show you something truly, truly special and that is the marriage between virtual reality and augmented reality, also known by the term XR. The moment the links was revealed, I couldn't wait to try it. I stayed in contact with founder Stan from the very beginning and over the course of its development, I've been keeping my eyes on it. And yeah, this week it finally, finally happened. I uh, took a six hours drive to Paris just so I could try a prototype of the Lynx R1. And for your information, I had about five hours of hands-on playtime, so let's call this my first impressions of something that is still a pre-production unit, but one that definitely shows the potential of where it wants to go. To be honest with you, this video will be more about my experience with the Lynx than really its specs on paper. I was just blown away by the potential use cases that flourished out of it when I put it on. It gave me a glimpse of where we're heading into the future and it's hella exciting, I tell you. So get ready. Without further ado, let's dive into the metaverse. Let me start by saying that the Lynx R1 is quite small and weighs almost nothing. And this is mainly due to the fact that the computer unit is in the front and the battery is in the back. Uh, it definitely is one of the lightest headsets I've tried so far. Uh, despite its solid material, it is surprisingly balanced out. And as you can see, it makes use out of a halo strap that can be adjusted with a simple dial. Uh, I usually prefer a head strap as well, but in this case, because of its form factor, it wasn't really needed. Just in case, they did make sure there is an opening available that supports it. During my play session, I did not feel the desire to adjust it at all. It just stayed in place nicely, I'm not kidding. I think it has partly something to do with the magnetic face cushion in the front and also the back. Those are quite pleasant and uh, cup your head nicely. Although I couldn't avoid getting a typical VR stamp on my uh, forehead. The battery plays a big role too and has about two to three hours of uh, power. Stan uh, said that it takes uh, one and a half hours to fully charge it with a USB-C cable. So that's not bad at all. On both uh, sides it has uh, inbuilt speakers. On the left an audio jack in combination with an SD card slot and in the front an array of four microphones that I sadly didn't get to try. Last but not least, it has uh, active cooling that you can see very well through this uh, transparent cover. This was a limited edition for the folks who backed uh, the Kickstarter. Uh, there is also a flip-up design with a strong hinge that isn't going anywhere. It's super, super uh, strong. And uh, a magnetic blinder that you can click into the front for when you go into VR. This lets you be completely immersed without having light leak in from the sides. Oh, and before I forget, it is glasses friendly. You can move the display further away or closer to your eyes by using a button on the top. The front plate houses a total of six cameras. Two of those are black and white cameras for inside out tracking, two RGB cameras that take care of the augmented reality aspect of the headset and the remaining two IR cameras are for hand tracking. The controllers on the other hand are still work in progress. Lynx is collaborating with a company named Finch to bring haptic 6 dove controllers to the market that not only work well for VR gaming but also for doing things in the augmented world. The button layout that they are currently using is not final and is subject to change like for example the plan of adding a joystick. I did get to test them out during a round of Half-Life Alex, Beat Saber and The Lab but more on that later. 
stay tuned. Uh, according to Stan, the Lynx R1 is designed and built to last. It is fully repairable and most of its components can be replaced if needed. That's amazing. Uh, now for the specs. Oh, the Lynx R1 has a Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 on board, 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. The SD card slot that I mentioned earlier allows you to upgrade to an additional 1 terabyte. What the heck? And this is one of the things we slowly see disappearing behind paywalls at other companies. The display exists out of dual LCDs with each a resolution of 1600 by 1600 pixels per eye and runs at 90 Hz. The lenses are looking completely alien by the way. It, it's something I have never seen on any other headset. So bear with me, what you see here are 4 fold cationodioptric prisms. Yes, in short what that means is that there are 4 quadrants that form a single image on your eye that in the end reduce the screen door effect and suffer less from god rays. It's interesting that this is one of the core reasons why the headset is so thin as the lights inside get folded into one path. So that's why they can make it so compact. The lenses can be adjusted independently and have an IPD range of 56 to 72 millimeters. Because the Lynx uses an XR2 chip, it comes with Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth and has the capability to stream VR content over the internet. So the first demo I got to try was showing off its hand tracking capabilities. Lynx uses uh, Ultra Leap's latest software named Gemini to accomplish this and what I could do was choose from a palette of different colors and then draw with my fingers to create a three-dimensional artwork that I could inspect from all directions. It's something I had done on an early version of the HoloLens so it didn't necessarily blew my mind but it did demonstrate how far we have come with hand tracking. As long as I stayed within the cameras their field of view I was able to make all kinds of gestures or even cross my fingers and that last part is very very impressive because I haven't seen any other device successfully do that yet. In my opinion the tracking volume could be a lot bigger as I still had to consciously keep an account to hold my hands in front of the headset, something they are apparently planning to expand with IR cameras that can simply see more. That's something other headsets already do uh, better. What's impressive too is that it has occlusion detection that allows you to move your hands behind an object or menu instead of it disappearing. And this was already a thing with physical objects but not in combination with a pair of moving hands. That's something the second demo highlighted even more strongly. It might look very basic, but trust me, it's so magical to see this happening in full color with barely any latency. It's a milestone that changes the way you see and interact with these holograms. They become more alive as we speak. So besides that, I could grab them and move them around in my physical space. And you may have noticed by now that the brightness, the color's temperature and the contrast is constantly changing and not always accurate. The Lynx is trying to adapt to the environment it's in, but as you can see it was still struggling to work flawlessly with different scenarios of light. It didn't bother me that much as I was more focused on the task itself, but when shifting my focus to the screen, overall it, it did become very noticeable. The display seemed to need some additional work. I found the so-called uh, holograms crisp but I wasn't so keen on the rest of the screen. The field of view is of course fantastic compared to current gen uh, AR glasses but the screen's uh, pass through was showing up as kind of blurry especially when I wanted to look into the distance. This could be a combination of the Lynx having a small sweet spot. It has previously mentioned uh, failing to accurately adapt to light, the RGB cameras maybe not being good enough and the display not being the sharpest to match all of that. The sweet spot wasn't meeting the standard of most other headsets in my opinion. It was okay until it gave me eye strain after using it for two hours. It significantly improved when switching to VR funny enough, so it must be hard to meet somewhere in the middle. I do have to give them credits for the fact I indeed didn't bump into any god rays, but I could spot the so-called screen door effect. So in a nutshell, the display felt extremely experimental and is being worked on 
and should be worked on. But with uh, that out of the way, let's move on to the most epic and mind-blowing demo I've tried in a while. A demo that for the first time ever showed me the marriage between uh, VR and AR. So I literally got to walk into our solar system and inspect the planets from up close to then grab them and take them from the virtual world into the real one. This is where you can see the boundaries between VR and AR slowly fade and turn into mixed reality or XR. You may know that in the future VR headsets will merge with AR glasses and become one device and this solar system demonstrated what that will look like. The fact you can seamlessly go from augmented reality into virtual reality and then back out is like discovering a whole new universe of use cases and possibilities for all kinds of sectors. It's freaking awesome. I know it's hard to bring over this excitement when you haven't tried this yourself, but if you get the chance, do it, because experiencing this with your own eyes will make you understand and open your mind. Personally, it made me once again realize how fantastic the future will be like with VR and AR going hand in hand. Forget the six hours drive, this was beyond worth it. And I have to thank Stan for giving me these insights. This was a huge honor, I'm not kidding. Anyways, as last I got to play a bunch of uh, games in full VR. It's kind of cool how I was the first one to try this out. I, uh, I kind of felt like a test monkey as the team over at Lynx just finished the first steps of getting it to work with uh, Steam VR. Before that, it apparently didn't run any games at all. So this was a true Eureka moment. You can even hear Stan in this clip being completely mesmerized. Wow. Wow. Ta -da. The bracelets I was wearing were temporary trackers to help with uh, keeping everything in position. So in the end, when the controllers are finalized, you will not need those. And also do keep in mind, we recorded on top of this. So that's why the gameplay looks a little laggy, but inside the links, it ran just fine. I wirelessly uh, dove into uh, Half-Life Alyx, Beat Saber and uh, The Lab. It's super weird how Steam emulated the Finch controllers as Vive ones, but that's because they have not been implemented with uh, the platform uh, just yet. And since they only got the basics down, I did notice that the controllers were slightly delayed in movement and were drifting over time. But I could play a game with a stable frame rate and no artifacts. And that's exactly what they wanted to prove to me. So overall, it's a bit too early to say if the Lynx is a true gaming machine, but I do have good hopes they optimize it to the point it works flawlessly. Again, they do need to look into the tracking volume as it simply isn't enough to wildly swing your controllers around without having to worry you uh, losing them. So yeah, that's what I got to experience on the Lynx R1, with my absolute highlight being the mixed reality demo of the solar system. I'm not going to lie, being back in City 17 was fun too. It's pretty clear that this prototype of the R1 sparks with potential and still needs loads of work. But with a successful Kickstarter campaign of 800k in the pocket, it should be enough to tidy everything up. I, I do want to say that I really appreciate them being so open about the things that are challenges for the team and the things that just don't work yet. This did give me a sense of trust and the passionate conversations I had with Stan about those only fueled that more. Unless he's a born actor, but I don't think so. I'm just joking. He was super nice. He seems to be a very honest and awesome dude that doesn't want to hide anything. So you do have to salute them for going up against all those tech giants that are probably working on the same stuff. And Stan did tell me that they are paying close attention to what they are doing. And that might be one of the reasons why you want to support them. Uh, the software side is still in early stages. The Lynx doesn't have a menu or a store that you can browse through. They want to work with side quests so they can give the content side out of hand. And most importantly, they want to launch the Lynx in April 2022. One thing they do know for sure, and that is that the Lynx will support an open metaverse. 
Hell yeah. So the headset is an Android 10 device, so they support Unity 3D with an SDK made uh, with Qualcomm and Ultra Leap, so it should be easy to develop applications. And it also comes with an OpenXI runtime that will enable the support of Unreal Engine, Godot, and more as well. For now, the Lynx seems to be most interesting for early adopter consumers and businesses who want to be the first ones to own or work with a true mixed reality headset. It is a literal window into the future that can be used to build a decentralized metaverse. And even if it's out of your budget, I would surely keep an eye on this ambitious project as it further develops. The hardware is partly ready to go, but the software has yet to catch up. If you want to learn more or want to pre-order the links, you can visit their official website. Links can be found in the description below. See uh, what I did there? <laughs> so anyways, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. And um, let me know in the comments below where you want VR and AR to go. What kind of games or applications do you see happen with the magic of uh, mixed uh, reality? Because the possibilities, as I said, are endless. And with that being said, see you in the metaverse. The one that is owned by us all. Bye-bye.